Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 28th of September with me, Patrick Munley. In the US, the highlight of the week will undoubtedly be the first presidential TV debate taking place in Cleveland on Tuesday evening. Biden goes into the debate with around a 7% lead in opinion polls and will face a stern test from President Trump, typically a strong performer in events like these. FX markets in Asia Wednesday morning may be the first litmus test of how the dollar will fare in the run-up to the election. One school of thought is that a strong Trump performance is equity positive and dollar negative. But if uh, Biden were to believe to uh, be the winner of the first debate, the dollar could decline, uh, especially if he becomes president well into 2021 on a benign worldview. Uh, but let's look out for uh, price action on Wednesday as that first indicator. In terms of the U.S. macro calendar, uh, we'll receive more insights into the U.S. jobs market via the September ADP and non-farm payroll releases. Look for uh, around 850,000 there in terms of uh, NFP, in terms of job losses. Uh, this could add the sense that the recovery is stalling. Uh, we'll also hear from a variety of Federal Reserve speakers. Most recently, the unified call from the Fed for more fiscal easing has been taken as equity negative and dollar positive. Thus, focus increasingly switches to Congress on whether Nancy Pelosi and Steve Mnuchin can find a path for fresh stimulus. From a technical perspective, dollar index is testing that uh, pivotal descending trend line highlighted in last week's review. And uh, we've seen some modest profit taking in terms of the long positions, but yet to see a meaningful reversal from this area. However, as this 9460 contains the upside, we could see a pullback to retest these uh, prior highs at the 9380 area to potentially act as support. Now, if they do and buyers step in around this 9380, then I look for another leg higher to complete a three pushes pattern here to test the next level of resistance up to 95.70. And that would fit with the fractal analysis from uh, last Thursday's uh, live market analysis session. But if, uh, if buyers fail to show up at the 93.80 and uh, we get back down through 92.79, then look for a retest of the price cycle lows at 91.79 en route to an ideal objective of this 89.50, which is the projected descending trend line support. So pivotal this week is going to be one, how we respond to this 9450 uh, area, and then two, how we fare when we retest the 9375. Uh, in the Eurozone, away from US politics, markets have surprisingly been pricing in more rate cuts from the European Central Bank. Money market futures are now fully price a 10 basis point rate cut by September 2021. I doubt the ECB would want to go down this route, more likely an extension uh, to the Pandemic Emergency Purchase Program or Public Sector Purchase Program in December. This week may have some bearing on the discussion. Wednesday sees both the Flash Eurozone September CPI and the ECB and its Watchers Conference. Another soft core CPI figure expected at around 0.4% year on year could keep rate cut expectations alive and the ECB event could see more reference to vigilance over the strong euro. Wednesday looks like it will be a busy day in the FX markets. Elsewhere, Tuesday sees Eurozone economic confidence figures for September. The overall index is expected to rise a little further, but traders will be watching the growing divergence between the industrial and services sectors, the latter starting to be hit by broader lockdowns. From a technical perspective, Euro dollar broke through the 117 sport area. Um, we're now testing the uh, 116 handle. Any move back into this 117 is, is going to be pivotal because if uh, if sellers step in again at 117 prior support now act, well 117 to 117.50 prior support now acting as resistance then I look for a move down to test the ideal 114.80 area the uh, March spike highs there and we could see a more meaningful correction from that area. However, if sellers don't step in at this 117.50, then I look for a retest of the price cycle highs at 120. 
Sterling has been relatively immune to the fall in risk sentiment, uh, with sterling dollar largely tracking the euro dollar decline, while euro sterling has been relatively flat. What currently matters more for sterling is the idiosyncratic driver of the UK-EU trade negotiations outlook. Will the easing in rhetoric from both sides uh, see sterling as therefore more stable and the euro despite the, the falling markets? Nonetheless, given the roughly 50-50 chance of a deal versus no deal, continue to see sterling as inadequately a price for the risk presented with limited risk premium built into sterling, thus see the potential for uh, more sterling downside. Uh, Chancellor Rishi Sunak's new wage subsidy plan has contributed to keeping sterling supported for now, but it is of secondary importance to the Brexit outlook. So should the domestic data point this week, with the main focus being on September PMI manufacturing, which is going to be released on Thursday. As sterling holds the 126.90 area, we look for a move back up to retest the uh, prior trendline support, uh, now to act as resistance, up towards 130. From here, I think we get a retest of uh, range support back down to 127.60. Uh, so really looking to, to play the range at the moment in terms of sterling. As mentioned last week, uh, the dollar yen has spent very little time below 105 over the last five years, barring crisis, and the recent jump from 104 is consistent with this pattern. Uh, the move could be consistent with a 15 basis point rise in real US yields since late August, largely as the equity sell-off has dragged US inflation expectations lower. But I suspect as well as that, Japanese fund managers are waiting in the wings to diversify into US assets when they see the dollar sub 105. That said, Dollyen looks to be a key vehicle to hedge US presidential election risk as the debates begin. Dollar yen could start to take a front seat. The highlight of the Japanese data calendar will be the third quarter Tankem results. Having dropped pre uh, precipitously in the second quarter, a decent bounce back is expected, consistent with the Bank of Japan having recently revised its economic outlook. So from a technical perspective, as 105.50 and 106 act as resistance, so I'm actually looking for a retest of uh, a bid back down below 104, ideally to the 78.6% retracement of the, uh, of the advance of the March lows, uh, which comes in at 103.47. From there, I think we could see a more meaningful correction uh, develop higher, where we could actually be up retesting ascending trend line resistance uh, towards 107.50, 108. And finally, in Australia, really uh, last week, the Aussie dollar was the worst hit currency outside of Europe as uh, we exited a tumultuous week for global markets. A key factor moving for the Aussie, which could once again trigger some underperformance versus its main peers, is the rising market expectations around more RBA stimulus. This week, RBA's Deputy Governor Guy de Bell delivered very dovish remarks and quite clearly pointed out that more stimulus is needed. The question on what tools will be used is open. Uh, whilst most market watchers think more quantitative easing will be the preferred choice over lowering rates, market expectations for a cut have risen quite significantly. The next meeting is scheduled for October the 6th, and as we approach it, we may see markets adding to their bets on a cut and the Aussie facing some idi idiosyncratic downside risk. On the calendar side, uh, main note this week is going to be uh, August retail sales on Friday is the, uh, is the key release to watch. So from a technical perspective, we have tested down to the 70 cent level. Uh, look for any correction higher here, back up into the 72.20 to 72.50 area to act as resistance for another leg lower, targeting uh, an equality objective down towards uh, 69 to 68.50. Only a move back through 73.30, 73.50 would negate the downside and have us once again looking at the 75 handle. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 28th of September. As always, be sure to join me on Thursday for my live market analysis session where I'll be delivering some real-time actionable analysis. So that's all for now. Have a great week.